citizens. Our scripture for today comes from Acts, the second chapter, verses 14 through 18. That's Acts, the second chapter, verses 14 through 18. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all my people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Thus I've read Acts, the second chapter, verses 14 through 18. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you on this beautiful Lord's Day. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see another day. We know that it is because of your grace and your mercy that we are here. Dear Lord, we thank you for our JMBC family. We thank you for our pastors, our leaders, our ministries, our members, our families, our friends and our community, Lord. We thank you for your love which flows through us and in us each and every day, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit which protects, guides, and directs us, Lord. Please, dear Lord, continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us as we go through each day. Help us to worship you as we should, Lord. Help us to love our fellow man, woman, boy, and girl, Lord. Help us to walk before those who are yours, Lord, and to walk before those who do not know you, Lord. Please, dear Lord, help them to see you in us and to want to be saved, Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for your holy power, your power that flows through this city, this state, this nation, and this world, Lord. We thank you for being with those who are sick, those who are bereaved, those who are homeless, those who are going through situations and circumstances that only you know about, Lord. We ask that you just continue to give them what they need. But we know, Lord, that you are providing what they need and you're there for them each and every day, Lord. Dear Lord, we ask you again to just touch hearts and minds that we all will come on one accord and just give you all the glory and honor that you deserve, Lord. Help us still, Lord, to reach out to those in need. Help us still, Lord, to be the hands and feet that you, you want us to be here on earth so that we can encourage, love, and care for each other, Lord. Please, dear Lord, help us as kingdom women to know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, Lord, and that we can make a in this world and in your kingdom. We ask that you just help us to continue to, to lift you in everything that we do. Help us to live right, to love right, Lord, and just bring glory to you each and every day, Lord. We love you and we praise you, Lord. We give you all the glory and the honor. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 
Good morning, Kingdom Citizens. We have a few announcements that we would like to share with you this morning. And we want to greet you this morning uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And want to welcome you to this Pentecost Sunday. This Sunday is the 50th day after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And women, might I say to you that um, in order for you to fulfill your mission as kingdom women, you are going to need the power that came at Pentecost. As we always remind you, our mission statement simply says, exalt the Savior, evangelize the lost, execute missions, edify the saints. Uh, our announcements this morning um, simply want to remind you, if you're not a part of a small group, um, that you need to become a part. We want to encourage you to become a part. Not only you, but your children and grandchildren. Again, you may call uh, the Griffin, Deacon and Deaconess Griffin. You may call uh, uh, the church office, or you may call me. And we would be glad to help you get connected to one of our small groups and your children. Uh, if you have questions about small groups with children, then you can call Pastor Simmons as well. If you've not been vaccinated, we do encourage you to get the vaccine. Uh, there's a bountiful supply that is available. Uh, please make sure that you take care of that. And we are delighted today to be able to welcome visitors. Maybe this is your first time um, watching uh, one of our church services. So we welcome you. Uh, and uh, however you got to our Facebook page, our church website, we want to thank you for joining us. We pray God will bless you through today's message. We also ask that you would pray for those families who are going through death, bereavement, and difficulties at this moment in time. We will not be able to mention all of them by name, but you know who they are, and as you do, please pray for them. At this moment, we want to pause um, to receive our tithes and offerings. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day that you've given to us. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to give back to you a portion of that which you've given to us. Help us, Lord, to give out of a heart of thanksgiving and great appreciation for what you've done for us. We commit this offering to you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to also remind you that uh, uh, the construction of the new building, the new edifice, is underway physically, so we ask you to remember to give to the vision as well, which is our building fund. Uh, please give generously. As always, there are three ways that you can give to the church or get your funds to the church. One is from the website. You can give through Givelify. Um, the second way is um, to come by the church and drop your tithes and offerings off in the lobby of the church, the foyer. Um, there is a receptacle there with envelopes where you can give your offerings. And then, of course, as always, the avenue of the U.S. Postal Service. You can put your offering in the mail to 803 South Harvin Street here in Sumter, South Carolina, 29150. So we encourage you to be faithful in giving. Remember the scripture, uh, uh, and God will always keep his word, which says, Give, and it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run over, shall men give into your bosom. Trust God, believe God's word, and see God work on your behalf. God bless you. Have a great day. What are you doing? I'm advancing the kingdom. But advancing the kingdom means more than that. Really? Like what? Well, it means that your strength in the Lord allows you to live life abundantly. Ooh, so I can get the latest iPhone and some new shoes? No. It means that you have enough joy so that you can share the gospel with others. So I can let others advance the kingdom? Or will I get another kingdom? Advancing the kingdom means more than just the sign that you carry. It's the way that you carry yourself. 
Your daily actions allow you to show your advancement in the kingdom more than just that sign. Your actions, your speech, your attitude, and your concerns for others. So I don't have to hold this sign? No, you just have to show God's principles in all that you do. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'd like to say hello to my Jehovah Missionary Baptist Church family in Sumter, South Carolina. I give honor to my father in the ministry, my pop, the Reverend Dr. Marion H. Newton, the senior pastor of Jehovah, to my mother, First Lady Newton, to my sister Maria and brother Gerard, and to the entire Newton family to all of the officers and members, visitors and friends of Jehovah Missionary Baptist Church, I greet you in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. And it is my privilege to be given this opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I call your attention today to the gospel of John, the fourth chapter, verses seven through 14. John, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse seven, herein we find these words. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritan Jesus answered her if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water sir the woman said you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep where can you get this living water are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, 
as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whosoever drinks the water that I will give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I want to use as a subject from which to preach, hidden in plain sight, two pots, two wells, and two locations. Hidden in plain sight, two pots, two wells, and two locations. Shall we pray? Eternal God, come now with thy quickening power and fall afresh on me. Breathe on me, O God, so that this message might come forth with power and with conviction to the end that someone might come running. What must I do to be saved? Have your way, O God, and get your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hidden in plain sight, two pots, two wells, and two locations. Beloved, Robert Antoine Wilson once said, the best place to hide something is out in the open because nobody ever thinks to look there. I think I ought to say that again. The best place to hide something is out in the open because nobody ever thinks to look there. In 1998, my deceased husband, Gregory Irvin Lee, who now sleeps eternally in the bosom of our God, he and I took a trip of a lifetime to the Holy Land, Israel. While we were in Jerusalem, we journeyed to Samaria to visit the city of this text, Sychar. And I can remember our tour guide leading us down some circular stone stairs 15 to 20 feet below ground level into a vaulted room. The room was decorated in Greek Orthodox style using stone mosaics and located on the opposite side of the stairs, there was a small chamber. It was Jacob's well. And brothers and sisters, when I realized that I was at Jacob's well, I became overwhelmed by the presence of God. It was a spiritually sobering and exhilarating experience. You see, I realized that I was standing there. I had now become the woman at the well. So as I continued to watch the tour guide turn the hand crank and lower the bucket into the soft limestone well, I became amazed at the depth of the well, which by now had dominated my attention. The well was so deep that it took 125 feet of rope before the pot ever touched the water. And when the tour guide brought the pot back up to the surface, I remember saying to myself, that's a lot of rope. And brothers and sisters, that is when I realized that wells are deep. So follow me. I was now the woman at the well. I was in a deep place and it led me into some deep processing. It was then that the Holy Spirit illumined my spiritual eyesight and I began to see what was hidden in plain sight to pots, to wells, and two locations. According to the text, it was over 2,000 years ago when Jesus left Judea 
on his way to Galilee and he needed to go through Samaria, which is called Sychar. And Sychar is near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. So according to the text, Jesus is weary from his journey and ends up at Jacob's well. Jesus is sitting on the well and a woman comes to the well with an empty water pot to draw water. Now, that's the first pot. The woman comes to the well to fill the empty pot. It is an empty pot, and this woman comes to fill it because when something is empty, you fill it. Am I right about it? The pot has no water, and it needs to be filled. So the woman of Samaria comes to fill the pot, and she meets Jesus sitting on the well. And brothers and sisters, hidden in plain sight is a second pot. The woman of Samaria is the first pot. But there is a second pot. The woman herself is the second pot. So the woman brings an empty pot to be filled, but the woman herself is a pot, and she is in need of being emptied. I, I walk with me while I work with it. There is a difference between the first pot and the second pot. The first pot was empty and it needed to be filled. But the second pot, this woman, is already full and she needs to be emptied. The woman, who is the second pot, is a vessel and she is full of baggage. And somebody says, well, what kind of baggage, uh, Dr. Penny, is she filled with? She's full of traditionalism, full of religiosity, full of concerns and burdens, and she is in the presence of Jesus. And here's the first point. When you are in the presence of God, you must be emptied. People of God, all of us need to go to the well all of us need to go to a deep place where we can access Christ and allow him to empty us of our baggage. Uh, look, look at the baggage that this woman pot was carrying. First, she was a woman. And the fact that she was a woman is significant because if you know anything about biblical history, then you know that women were second class citizens. Women back then were treated like a piece of fine art. They were to be seen and not heard. Secondly, she was a Samaritan. Her political affiliation was questionable. Samaritans were minorities, and because of her race and her culture, she was seen as less than, not as good as. Her religious affiliation and her national position meant that she was considered an alien in the eyes of the Jews. And even though you know the story, the Samaritans and the Jews were physically alike in many ways, they ate the same foods, followed the same locations, possessed the same hopes and ambitions, suffered the same diseases. There was a racial hatred that kept them apart. And it occurred after the Jews returned from the Assyrian captivity. You remember what happened. Uh, the Samarians, the Samaritans returned from captivity. And when they came back, they had the audacity to stop worshiping Yahweh at Jerusalem and to build their own rival temples on Mount Gerizim. And I think that that is what happens 
to all of us today, especially as African Americans, whenever a people decide to do their own thing, whenever we as a people decide to exercise our own will, our own power, our own authority, their own decision making, make their own decision, it creates conflicts. It created a rage, a religious bitterness between the Jews and the Samaritans. But watch this, there is more baggage. She was not only a woman, she was not only a Samaritan, but she was also poor. And somebody says, well, how do you know she was poor when the text is silent? Well, we know that she was poor because in those days, women of affluence, a woman of wealth and status did not draw water for themselves. If you were a woman of wealth and status, then you had servants who served you. And according to the text, she was not only poor, but she was also a sinner. She was an adulterer who had five husbands, and the one she was currently with did not belong to her. Lord, help me preach. Uh, so she was a woman, a Samaritan, she was poor, and she was a sinner. But here's the good news. She was all that and then some, but she was in the presence of Jesus with all of her baggage. And when Jesus asked her for a drink rather than respond, she immediately asked him, why are you asking me, sir? a Samaritan for a drink of water. Because I know, the woman says to Jesus, I know that you know that Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. But Jesus breaks every rule in the book. Thank you, Jesus. He speaks to a woman. Uh, he speaks to a Samaritan. Uh, because when you are in the presence of God, he will receive you just as you are. Somebody needs to know today, today that your profile, your politics, or your possessions do not matter. Jesus will accept you just as you are. And so people of God, I encourage you to take a trip to the well. Go to a deep place where you can have a little talk with Jesus. You can tell him all about your troubles. I'm a witness that he will hear your faintest cry and he will answer you by and by. Ah, just like he did with this poor woman, this Samaritan, this sinner. He will do for you and me. He will hear our faintest cries and I'm a witness that he will answer by and by. Secondly, come with me so that we can uncover the second well located in this text. The woman and Jesus are at Jacob's well. And a well is a deep hole dug or drilled below sea level for the purpose of accessing water, oil, or gas. In other words, a well is a deep source to be drawn from. Let me let that settle in your spirit. I need you to hear it again. A well is a deep source to be drawn from. So people of God, as I stood at Jacob's well, uh, I was the second woman. You see, the woman who had come to the well uh, with an empty pot was the first woman. I was now the second woman. And I came with a whole lot of baggage back then in 1998. But God allowed me to see hidden in plain sight another well. <laughs> uh, this second well is so much deeper than Jacob's well. But here is the difference. This well is not producing oil or gas. This well 
is giving living water, Lord help me preach, to all who are thirsty and to all those who drink from this well hmm, will never be thirsty again. Have you figured it out yet? The second well, Jesus is the well. <laughs> Jesus is the deep source sitting on Jacob's well waiting for you and I to enter into his presence so that we can draw from him the living water that will never run dry. Oh, brothers and sisters, Jesus is the well. And the woman, unbeknownst to her, is now in the presence of the well, not a well. So here's the second point. When you are in the presence of Jesus, the well that will never run dry, you will be filled. According to the text, Jesus, who is the well, engages the woman in a conversation by asking her for a drink of water. And according to the text, the woman asked Jesus, why was he asking her for a drink? because she was a Jew and, and a Samaritan and they both knew that the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. But in the text, Jesus the well <laughs> begins to fill the woman who is the second pot. He says to her, if you knew <laughs> the gift of God and who it was that was asking you for a drink, you would be asking me for water because anyone who drinks of this water that you've come to get will be thirsty again <laughs> but if you drink of the water that I shall give it will become in you a fountain springing up to everlasting life in other words Jesus who is the well said to the woman, the second pot, ah, uh, the water that I will give you has transformative power. The water that I will give you has the power to change you, the power to save you. And I came by to declare and to remind all of you under the sound of my voice uh, that the water that God gives is still available for you and for me. And just like the woman, the second pot, who came to Jacob's well full, after encountering Jesus, the well, this woman was emptied and then filled with the living water. And so I came by to declare that you can still, hallelujah, you can still find Jesus, the well. Uh, he is still available to meet you in a deep place where you can be emptied of those burdens that are wearing you down, where you can be emptied of bad attitudes and gossiping tongues, uh, emptied of evil wickedness, depression, emptied of anger, emptied of grief. Brothers and sisters, God wants to empty you all. God wants to empty all of us from what is weighing us down. God said to tell you that he's still available. All you need to do is to show up at a deep place or show up in a deep place so that he can fill you up with the living water, so that he can fill you up with his love, fill you up with his word, fill you up with his purpose, fill you up with his passion, fill you up with his forgiveness. God wants to fill us up with his understanding. He wants to fill us up with his presence, with his power, and with his peace. So it's time, people of God, to go to the well so that you can, like the woman, encounter Jesus, who is known by many names. Ah, uh, one of the names that I like to call him is the truth. Ah, uh, at the well, beloved, 
you will encounter Jesus, who is the truth. <laughs> uh, and he will enlighten you with the truth so that you will confess the truth. Uh, Jesus, brothers and sisters, conversed with the woman and told the woman to go get her husband. You know the text. And you know the story. The woman confessed, I have no husband. And Jesus, watch this, who is the well, he fills the woman by first acknowledging that she had told the truth. Not only had she told the truth, but she told the truth to the truth. Uh, Jesus is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, she told the truth to the truth. Uh, hallelujah. She said, I have no husbands. Oh my God. And Jesus says, you have told the truth because you do not have any husbands. And even the one you're with now is not your husband. Hallelujah. Notice that this woman of Samaria, the first pot, is in the presence of the well, Jesus. This woman is in the presence of the truth and she tells the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to the truth. I think I wanna rewind and replay this woman is in the presence of Jesus who is the well and she tells the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth to the truth what are you saying doc when you are in the presence of Jesus who is the well you will fess up you will confess you will tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm so glad that I can tell Jesus the whole truth. I may not be able to tell family and friends, colleagues and co-workers, but I can show sure enough confess because Jesus knows all about it anyhow. So just go ahead and fess up and tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to the truth. Hallelujah. Finally, so bring this message to a close. Hidden in plain sight is a second location. The well has a second location. According to this text, Sychar is located near the plot of ground that Jesus gave to his son Joseph. Hence, the well of the text is called Jacob's well. But beloved, here is the revelation that I received in 1998 when I recognized that I was a woman at the well and that I was really in the presence of the well. I recognized that I had to be emptied and then refilled. And because I had come with so much baggage, I began to see what was hidden in plain sight, that I was no longer, Lord help me preach, at Jacob's well. It had now become Jesus's filling station. Filling station. I'm going to pronounce it because I'm a Geechee Gullah girl from St. Helena Island, South Carolina. Uh, when, we, when I was growing up and I became a teenager growing up on St. Helena Island, I remember driving back and forth after I'd gotten my license, back and forth across the bridge because on St. Helena Island, there was only one way on and one way off. You know that an island is surrounded by four bodies of water. And so uh, uh, whenever my car, Lord help me preach, was empty, I immediately knew that I needed a refill. So without thinking, I would go to the fill-in station. And you see, 
uh, growing up in the country, we never called or referred to a gas station as a gas station. That was just not a formal term that we used. As a Geechee Gullah girl, and I know I'm preaching to Jehovah. I know I'm preaching to my South Carolinians. So y'all understand, as a Geechee Gullah girl, gas stations were called fill-in stations. And at the fill-in station, Lord help me preach, I could get filled up. At the fill-in station, I could get what I needed to keep running a little while longer. At the fill-in station, I could get filled up until the next time I needed a fill-in. Well, the woman at the well, the first pot, met Jesus, the well, at Jacob's well. The woman became filled with so much love, filled with so much wisdom, filled with the presence of God, that the text says she left the filling station, Lord help me preach, and she went running into the city. Brothers and sisters, she went running to pour out what the well, the well Jesus had poured into her. Ah, uh, you feel me? She went running to pour out, running to tell everybody about a man who told her everything about herself. Ah, uh, I dare you to recognize that it's no longer Jacob's well, but when you've been in the presence of God, when you've been in the presence of Jesus, uh, uh, when you leave his presence, uh, he will have filled you with living water. He will have filled you up. And so then you begin to realize that wasn't Jacob's well. That's what happened to me by the time I was leaving Israel in 1998. In fact, that afternoon as we left what we thought was Jacob's well. I had been in the presence of God and he had poured out on me so heavily. He had allowed me to see what was hidden in plain sight. Two pots, two wells, and two locations. And so just like that woman of our text, I left Israel running, hallelujah. I left running to pour out everything that the well Jesus had poured into me. <laughs> ah, the text says that the woman went running <laughs> all over the city. I tell you, I've been running all over the world trying to tell everybody about a man who changed me, trying to tell everybody about a man who saved me. I've been running and pouring out trying to tell everybody, anybody who will listen about a man who has the power to save. Hallelujah. 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 People of God, Jesus, the well has poured into us his love. He has poured into us his salvation. He has poured into us his grace and poured into us his mercy. He has poured into us his forgiveness. So we should be running, Jehovah. Get up even in the midst of the pandemic. Go running and tell everybody that Jesus Christ went to a deep place called Calvary. <laughs> Get up and tell everybody <laughs> that he was crucified on an old rugged cross. Uh, I dare you to go run and tell everybody that he was buried in a borrowed tomb and that he stayed there all night Friday night. He stayed there all day Saturday. He stayed there all night Saturday night. But tell them that early on a Sunday morning, uh, early on a Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hands. Tell anybody who will listen that Jesus Christ lives. He lives. 
he lives he lives tell everybody about a man who has saved you sanctified you and filled you with the living water never again never again never again should you see this text without seeing two pots two wells and two locations it's there hidden but in plain sight go tell somebody about Jesus who is the Christ that he saves to the utmost and that you don't have to clean yourself up or fix yourself up he will accept you just as you are just come come to Jesus just as you are and that's amen my brothers and sisters we thank the Lord for a very powerful message this morning from our sister, our friend, uh, Dr. Penny Sweetenberg Lee. And we are so excited that God has used her one more time. We thank God for her spirit, her enthusiasm, and her scholarship. And we pray today that you heard something that has pricked your heart and that you'll respond to the Spirit's call today. Maybe the Spirit is calling you to give your heart to Christ. So you've never done that. Would you open your heart today and invite him in? The Bible says, Thou art confessed with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Have you ever confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you have not, Please convert that into a prayer today and ask the Lord to forgive you, come into your heart, and save you where you are. Every person needs to be saved from their sin. Secondly, maybe you have made a commitment to the Lord, but you've walked away from the Lord. We ask you today to make the commitment to return to the God of your salvation. He's already made the way. All you need to do is come back. He said, Thou uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will receive us. Please don't believe the lie of the devil that says that because of what I've done, God will not forgive me this time. God will forgive you every time. And finally, if you're not a part of a local church, we want to invite you to become a part of our local church. The number that appears on the screen, the church's number, you can connect with our church, Jehovah Missionary Baptist Church, online, uh, in person, uh, however uh, you desire to do so. We are a church. We have become a church without walls. And we are seeking to make a difference, not only in the summer community, but throughout the nation. Yes, even throughout the world. Again, if you've made a commitment today of any kind, please call the church and let us help you in your newfound decision. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Let us receive the benediction. And brothers and sisters, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which saved to build you up and give you an inheritance among all that which are sanctified. To him be glory both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen.